Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Reformation Sunday. It actually is Reformation Day today, October 31st. Welcome also to those who are worshiping with us online. And it's just a reminder that um, if you'd like to have your own bread and juice or wine uh, ready to participate in Holy Communion with us later in the service. Announcements are on the extra sheet that you should have gotten if you don't get them by um, email. Just a reminder, and maybe I didn't look at the sheet, but I'm not exactly sure what's on there. Um, reminder that Family Worship Sunday is next Sunday. It is also a all, the day that we celebrate All Saints, so it'll be a combination of Family Worship and All Saints. Although, really, tomorrow is All Saints Day, November 1st. Out on the table, in the, um, the sign-up table, as we call it, out in the hallway there, across from the bulletin board, are hearts, pumpkins, and leaves. And if you would like to write on one of these and with something you are grateful for, and there's text there, right? There's text, then to put it up, It'd be fun to fill, just fill up that board by the time we get um, to the end of November before Advent begins. Also, there is a meeting on this Wednesday at 5.15 between Confirmation and Youth Group for all youth um, interested in going to the National Youth Gathering in next July. That's those who are in 8th grade right now through those who are in 12th grade right now. And also any adults that just would like to learn more about what the youth gathering is and what we're going to be working towards. I think that's all I was supposed to announce. Daylight time. Say what? Daylight savings time. Oh yeah, daylight savings time. Put your clocks back next Saturday before you come to worship. Shirley? Oh, okay. From from the accident back. Right. Yep, and they had they'd received a whole lot of help and um, yeah. There was an was there an article in the paper about that too? I just heard it. Up. Okay, Monday night at ten on channel nine. Ruth and her husband will be interviewed. That was an accident they had last year. December, oh, it was the day after Christmas, December 26th, okay. All right, anything else? Uh, oh, just a, a note for the bulletin. Um, our first reading is going to actually be from the book of Ruth. It will be up on the screens. It's pastor's prerogative to change the readings in the last minute. It's an alternative reading for this Sunday. And it just works a whole lot better with everything. Um, but you know, there's never too much scripture, so I, um, I also commend Deuteronomy reading in your bulletin. Please stand as you're able as we begin worship. And we're going to skip that beginning invocation because it's in the call to worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Blessed be God who sustains and protects God's holy church. And blessed be God who guides and confirms us in our faith. Amen. Alleluia. Let us confess our sin against God, neighbor, and creation. God of our hearts and God of our lives, we pray for forgiveness this day. For choosing power over service, forgive us. For seeking glory rather than humility, forgive us. For pushing ourselves to the front 
When our presence is needed on the sidelines, forgive us. Help us know where we are needed and how best to serve you and your people. Guide us to your side that we might be your hands of healing and compassion for a world in need. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. By grace, you have been saved. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May God who dwells in your heart keep you in the way of life and peace. Amen.
the grace and peace of God, the hope of Jesus Christ, and the consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have taught us in your Son that love fulfills the law. Inspire us to love you with all our heart, all our soul, our mind, and our strength, and teach us how to love our neighbors as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Ruth, the first chapter. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Melan and Shilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there, but Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malan and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you, the Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came near and heard Jesus and the Sadducees disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, 
You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to answer to ask him any question. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Abby and Aaron, do you want to come up for a spur of the moment children's message? Young person's message? How are you guys doing today? Awesome. Great. You're good and you're awesome. Yeah, I'm kind of right in between those two. So, Reformation Sunday, have any idea what that means? Oh, we haven't gotten that far yet in confirmation class. Um, it is a Sunday when we remember back over 500 years ago, there was just one church in the world, the Roman Catholic Church. And they were acting in ways that made people think they had to earn God's love, that God was only going to love them if they were good enough, if they did enough good works, they paid enough money to the church. Is that the way we do things these days? No. Good answer. These days, how do we know God loves us? What's the answer if you don't know the answer? Jesus! Jesus! Exactly. We know that God loves us because of Jesus. And because of what if, because of Jesus' death on the cross and the resurrection, and we don't have to earn God's love. God just loves us. We don't have any say in the matter. If we don't want God to love us, too bad, God does. So Martin Luther, the guy, he started a big movement called the Reformation to reform the church, to change the church. And out of that Reformation, there was, after it was kind of, it, actually the Reformation is always happening because we're always trying to be more faithful and work on the church to be ever more the church God wants it to be, but that's how we ended up with all sorts of denominations. It's out of that Reformation, other denominations, particularly the Lutheran Church and Reformed Church, started to um, come into being and help people grow in faith in ways that they didn't feel like they were never good enough. So in our reading, Jesus said the most important commandment is to love God, and then it's to love one another. What does love look like? Caring, um, taking care of someone. You know what? There are so many ways. So we use sometimes we use hearts, right, to to show um, because it's hard to put love into words, isn't it? Yeah, so it's hard to put love into words, and the best way to show we love someone is to both tell them and to show them in actions. So I've got a couple blank bookmarks that you can decorate any way you want to keep for yourselves or to give away that show that in some way have something to do with loving God and loving one another. And maybe you'd even, as siblings, want to like make a bookmark for each other and exchange them, even though I'm probably kind of hard to like one another sometimes. But you always love one another, right? I had, I had two older brothers and I had two sisters, and yeah, we didn't always get along, especially those brothers of mine. But we always love one another. So here's a bookmark to decorate as you wish, and thank you for being here today. You can go back. That was the Reformation in 60 seconds, or two minutes.
grace and peace from God, the source of all life, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We belong to God, and we belong to one another. It's such a simple statement, and yet it holds a truth that is so profound and life-giving that it takes our entire lives and then some into the next to live into its meaning. We know as people of God, this side of the Reformation, that through Jesus Christ, God loves us, saves us, frees us, makes us God's own. Through Jesus Christ, God makes us one body, siblings in faith and love. And we have absolutely no say in this, none at all. We don't get to choose that God loves us. We don't get to choose that God connects us to one another. God just does. On the cross, God says yes to each and every human being that God has made in God's image, which is all people everywhere. Thank you, Carl. This truth was the crux of the Reformation and is the truth on which some say the church, even today, stands or falls, that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. What difference, though, does God's grace to us in Christ make in our everyday lives? You know, it's all heady stuff, this theology about the Reformation. But what is it practically? What does it mean that we are free to love and serve God and others without fear? Well, it's without fear of making mistakes, without fear of doing it the right way or the wrong way in order to earn God's love or get left out. God loves us into saying yes to God's yes to us. And today's readings flesh out this so what of being saved by grace through faith. Dear people of God, God's command to love God and love neighbor isn't a have to. God's command to love is a gift for life. It is a get to. By linking these two commands, love God and love neighbor, Jesus reminds us that they really can't be separated, that they really can't be understood apart from, one, from each other. And if you think about the Ten Commandments, loving God and loving neighbor are the two halves of the commandments. The first three are about loving God, and the next seven are about loving our neighbor. Loving God looks like all the ways that we show love to one another, like caring for one another, as the kids said. It also looks like a whole lot of other things, and we could fill pages and pages to list the ways that we show love to other human beings. We'd see that love is emotion, that love is action. Love is tender and difficult, resilient. We'd see that such love is a path that God reveals to us through faith because it's the way of Jesus. It leads us through places where fear threatens and grief overwhelms, where pain and suffering breaks our hearts. If you don't want your heart to hurt, then don't love. This is, after all, the path of Jesus, the way of the cross, which means that love also leads us into places where God's grace surprises and delights us, brings, us, brings from us more courage and vision for justice, more love for God and one another than we could ever imagine on our own. The story of Naomi and Ruth is what belonging to God and belonging to one another looks like in practice, in a most profound and beautiful way. A young woman named Ruth professes her love to her mother-in-law, Naomi, and Ruth's poetic vow brims with passion. It's often quoted in modern wedding ceremonies. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. 
If young lovers would take a hard look at the entirety of the story, they'd soon see that this is not a vow made when love is fresh and new and hopeful. Ruth's promise to Naomi is made when both of them are left widowed, vulnerable, grief-stricken, and bereft. This vow of love is made when Naomi is bitter against God. She's old and sees no hope in her future, and yet knows her daughter-in-laws at least have a chance to remarry and find a new life in their own country of Moab. She loves them too much to ask them to stay with her even when it means that she will be alone and ever more vulnerable in a culture that has really no safety net for widows. Which makes this pledge of Ruth even more astounding. Nothing was certain. There was no guarantee they'd get to Judas safely or even alive. Ruth's love for Naomi is affectionate, yes, but it's about so much more than emotion. Spiritual writer Debbie Thomas sums it up like this. Ruth recognizes that Naomi is far too broken to offer her much reassurance or comfort. She knows that leaving Moab with her mother-in-law and traveling to Judah will render her an unwelcome foreigner in a culture that has a history of expelling foreign women as dangerous. She knows that money will be scarce, her prospects for remarriage uncertain, and any future reunion with her birth family is unlikely. She knows that sticking with Naomi will require a reordering of her life. And yet she puts her legitimate worries, losses, and fears aside and vows to love Naomi as herself. It is indeed a beautiful love story. Ruth chooses the way of God over the way of fear, even though she did not yet know the one God of Israel. The path of love that she chooses will be precarious, unfamiliar, and costly. And yet, as we know from the end of Ruth and Naomi's story, it will also be the path that leads to healing redemption, joy, and new life. God is not overtly present in the book of Ruth. We do not hear God's voice or direction, yet God's presence can be discerned and felt through the very human choices and actions of the characters. Where both Naomi and Ruth are just a tad bit manipulative, but all for the good, And as Jesus reminds us, this is the way that God's loves work. Not the manipulative part, but the love of God and neighbor. Where you stick with something, no matter the cost, stick with someone. Divine love becomes real for us when our love for one another becomes real. When the rubber hits the road, as they say. When we commit to brave choices and right actions for one another when we choose to walk not in fear but in love, on paths that can be dangerous and uncertain, paths on which God will not let any single one of us remain unchanged or unloved. Back to the gospel for just a minute. After Jesus' exchange with the scribe, Mark writes, after that, no one dared to ask him any question. Jesus had left his questioners, the crowd, silenced. Like it or not, they knew he was right. What might have it, what might it, I really wrote this a bad sentence. What do you think it would have felt like to be there, to be standing there in that silence, breathing in that silence that came after Jesus' words about love. Was it fear that caused the people to be silent? Or God's love that silenced the people? Or some of both? Being in the presence of God 
should make one quake and tremble and be quiet. Might it been a silence pregnant with love that is birthed on the cross? Did such a silence hang in the air after Ruth professed her love to Naomi? Such love does leave us, at least for a moment, speechless. As I told the kids, it is hard to put love into words. And when someone professes their love for us, for God, in a way that is just so striking, it is good to just be silent and let the Spirit work on us. Oh boy, I didn't tell the ushers. Did you all get a blue piece of paper? Good job, ushers. <laughs> Contains these following questions or something close to it that um, I've kind of paraphrased from Debbie Thomas. When have you been loved when you were defeated and bereft? What difference has that made? When has someone loved you in the midst of their own vulnerability? How often have you pledged your faithfulness, or when have you pledged your faithfulness and loyalty to the vulnerable, the lost, the defeated, the hopeless, and discovered that God meets you in that pledge? When have you embarked on a loving path, not because of what you felt, but because you responded in obedience to the first and greatest commandment? For those of you who are worshiping online, I'm going to put this on our Facebook page um, later this morning. Take this slip of paper home with you, and may you find time this coming week to sit in silence and ponder these questions. What might they reveal to you about God and yourself? Your relationship with God and with those who surround you with those maybe you don't know, but you've done something in way of service and love? What stirrings of love and word and action might the Spirit put on your heart? Divine love is in the silence, love that will and does cast out fear, for so God has promised. Dear people of God, you belong to God and you belong to one another. In Christ, you are already on the path that leads to healing, redemption, joy, and new life. And God's command to you to love God and neighbor isn't a have to, it's a get to. God's command to love is a gift for life, for you, and for your lives. It's a done deal. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you.
we stand as you are able. Let us profess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Strengthen the church to rediscover paths of love throughout the world and raise up teachers and leaders to guide communities of faith into joyful ways of welcoming, worshiping, healing, praying, singing, feeding, teaching, loving, and living. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Embolden movements of people to care for the world around us. Re reveal to us creation's beauty and teach us to care for your fields, valleys, mountains, streams, oceans, and deserts so that future generations will continue to be awed by them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who aspire to public office and for all who will vote on Tuesday at local polling places, <clears throat> especially in Lincoln County. Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern so that communities of justice and peace may thrive. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Provide refuge and help for all who lack adequate food, housing, or health care. Strengthen organizations that provide neighborly care to all who struggle. Heal and be present with all who are sick or suffering in any way, especially Lorraine, Becky, Lois, Amy, Phil and Jackie, Steve and Lana, Tammy, Barb, Katie, John, Andy, Elvira, Lori, Chad, Dan, Chase, Gabriella, Marilyn, Jeff, and those we name in our hearts or allowed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who seek to grow in faith and love of you, especially those in this congregation. Guide teaching and learning in confirmation, small groups, Sunday school, youth groups, schools, seminaries, and universities. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us, who dwell in your holy habitation. Give us courage through their example to challenge unjust systems and work toward life-giving reformation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and our life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Please share signs of peace with one another. And at this time, ushers, if you'd bring the offering forward.
abundance. You, you cause, cause streams to break, break forth in the, the desert, desert and manna to, to rain from the heavens. Accept the, the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile into the future. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. The night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering Christ's love for us, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. We pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst come, for the table is ready and all are welcome. You may be seated. For those worshiping online, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Abel. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of new life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Receive the benediction. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. Woo, trunk or treat tonight, four to six. Come get your candy. Bye.